Hey everybody, I recently noticed that we had a post on this forum where there was confusion between Rhizopus and Aspergillus niger. So I decided to make a video about Aspergillus niger because I always have access to it. So let's get started. You already saw the colony. The colony has a white mycelial mat and Canidia fours that produce black Canidia. Rhizopus, of course, also does this. So the devil is in the details. As we can see here, the Canidia fours have an irregular margin around them and they are dry. This is because Aspergillus produces spores out of the Canidia four that are not bound by a membrane unlike Rhizopus. So here I'll gather some of these. Uh, it's also interesting to note that these are called Canidia fours because they produce Canidia, where in the Zygomycetes mucorales, the reproductive structures are called sporangia. So I'll just get some of these on the slide and we'll have a look. The dye, if you're curious, is lactophenol cotton blue, which tends to stain chitin dark blue, which brings out the edges of highline structures. So here we can see the head of the Canidia four. Now, we can already see that it is similar to Rhizopus in many ways, in that it has a non-septate hypha leading down to the mycelium and it has a round spore bearing structure. The big difference is these structures are producing spores that are not bound in a membrane. So you get the irregular margins where just chains of conidia are being produced with no boundaries. If you let these live long enough, they will produ produce very large clusters of spores uh, that appear more and more irregular on the macro scale. So we can see here, and I will have sections where I zoom in even more to show more details. You have uh, the hypha leads up to what's called a vesicle. This is a swelling uh, which then provides nutrients to secondary structures that are called phyllids. In uh, Aspergillus and Penicillium both, phyllids are structures, tubular structures, that produce spores by basically forming an outer layer, the cell wall, and then filling it with material and then capping it at the end, and that produces the spore. So these uh, tubular kind of sausage-shaped structures are then producing the spores, which are made one after another and usually attached to each other in a chain. I'm going to 100x here for the high detail so we can see more of this structure. There we go. So we use a term with Aspergillus. It's, uh, it has to do with how many stages there are in these phyllids. Uh, in this case, because it's an immature conidia fore, we see only one stage directly off the vesicle. But in the mature conidia fore, we're going to see two. And I don't know if the quality of the video can show it or not. Um, in this case, we have a kind of foundational structures, which are big, fat, tubular structures. And then from that, you'll have multiple phyllids that grow off of it, which are more narrow tubular structures that produce the actual spores. Uh, in Aspergillus niger, this is called, uh, this is a biseriate conidia four. A uniseriate conidia four does not have those base structures. It only has the phyllids. Uh, the base structures are called metulae and then you have the phyllids that come off of it. Hopefully, as I zoom in and out here, we can see that we have two different, uh, two different 
cells, the metulae and then the phyllids on the end, and then the spores that form chains coming off of it. So now let's go to 40x and look at some of the other structures. Uh, I, I had a hard time getting a good example of septation, but this is the other really important thing that distinguishes the zygomycetes from the other fungi. Uh, all aspergillus have septated hyphae, and I'm trying to point out a septation here, but I imagine the video quality may not, may not show it very well. So looking for septations is very important, but keep in mind that the conidia for stipe, which is the hyphae that leads up to the spore bearing structure, is rarely segmented in aspergillus. The other important thing for Aspergillus niger are its spores. The spores have a black rough margin. They will look clear inside, but uh, you stack enough of them together and you'll form a black mass, which you can see here. Uh, they are all regular in shape, where the Mucoraleys tend to have some irregularity in their shape. Uh, the Mucoraleys tend to be uh, gray colored throughout, and they tend to be smooth, uh, have a smooth edge. All right, well, I hope that you have enjoyed this little uh, demo of Aspergillus niger. Uh, please leave a comment, and uh, I will try to do a follow-up with Rhizopus or Mucor when I encounter it. Thanks a lot.